How's it everyone? I'm Ulfganger and welcome to another episode of This Week in WoW where I cover the WoW news of the week and any other interesting WoW related things from the internet. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. On today's episode I'll be covering Sockets and Legendaries, a not so invisible invisible wall blocks a demon hunter's skip into Zara lore, a class trainer that wasn't disabled, the stockade's dungeon not knowing what holiday is currently underway, a PSA about Valor, the Sanctum of Pineapples browser game, Nvidia finally fixing an issue, and I have a stellar day in WoW. So, there's been a lot of talk online about sockets on gear. More specifically, the ones that now come with newly crafted legendaries. Blizzard announced that newly crafted legendaries for specific slots will automatically get sockets added to them. This, in combination with the domination socket system coming with 9.1, has people in a bit of a spin. The kerfuffle comes when you're trying to min-max your gear, and one of the domination gear items you need to make the set bonus happen is the same slot as your current legendary. The TLDR is that unless you're a serious raider, you are largely unaffected by all of this and can simply carry on with your life. Next, we have an interesting change that was noticed by Reddit user DCC18. There exists a skip for demon hunters in the Desirable Raid where you can get past the mecha talk encounter by going high up a flight of stairs and gliding to the entrance of his arena and then gliding and doing some fell rushes across the arena and skipping the encounter. Now what has been noticed is this little neon pink block to the side of the stairs. This is a badly hidden invisible wall that was added. These artifacts are usually placed within or below existing structures so that they are out of sight. While I'm not exactly sure what happened here or why it was even implemented in the first place, it's anyone's guess, but the fact that we can see the little pink block was probably just human error as it's pretty obvious that it, this thing should not be visible. Over on the reddit post itself there was a person who decided that a negative comment was the order of the day and well needless to say the community was not exactly impressed with this guy. Staying on reddit a user by the name of Ragnarite found a rather interesting piece of history. A class trainer that is still trying to give class since the release of Legion, class trainers have largely been made obsolete and with no real value seeing as we now learn abilities automatically and can change talents and specs ourselves in rested areas. However, Ragnarite found a trainer in the Worgen starting zone of Gilneas. The mage trainer Miriam Spellwaker seems to still offer the ability to teach spells and in this case also allowing you to learn an ability well before you would learn it on your own. Now this is probably just a simple oversight, especially seeing as how heavily phased the Gilnean starting zone is, and seeing that it was taken the WoW community around four years to figure this out. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this can be written off as a not so bad bug and just simply human error. Next, yet another reddit story, is a very confused dungeon. Reddit user MoonFairyRose found that the stockades dungeon seems to contain the decor from four in-game holidays. These are Lovers in the Air, Midsummer Fire Festival, Brewfest and Wintervale. From what I can tell, the placement of the decor changes with each instance as I entered the dungeon multiple times, resetting in between, and each time things were in a different place. The likely cause for the issue is that Midsummer is currently underway 
and for some reason this dungeon is confused as to what decor it should be using. Then a PSA from your favorite worgen. Remember to cash in any remaining valor that you may still have as with the reset on July 6th your valor will be converted into gold. There does not seem to be any indication as to what the exchange rate will be but I can guarantee that it will not be great. Blizzard have in the past exchanged currencies into gold and Titan Residuum comes to mind. The best suggestion is that you go and have a chat with Kotul who can be found next to the Great Vault and exchange your valor for some materials that you can then flip for some decent gold over on the auction house. The material you choose will be largely dependent on your own realm's economy but Heavy Callous Hide seems to be about the best overall bet. In other news, Tactical Air Horse has released another pineapple based raid simulator, Sanctum of Pineapples. Similar to Castle Pineapple, Sanctum of Pineapples is a browser based minigame that is designed to help you learn and understand the mechanics that you will encounter in each boss fight in the Sanctum of Domination raid. While this is mainly aimed at DPS players, healer and tank spec players will also get valuable knowledge from attempting its levels. Also, it's quite a lot of fun as a game on its own. I found myself playing it for about an hour just because I was enjoying it that much. Next, we have a bit of tech news that will have many WoW players rejoicing. Nvidia has finally released a fix for the annoying flashing that has plagued some zones in the Shadowlands. This issue started around the time Nvidia released their 460.0 driver, a driver that was to provide some features to Cyberpunk 2077 and has been something that we've had to deal with since. There were some workarounds including rolling back to an older version of the Nvidia driver and changing the DirectX version in game from 12 back to 11. But now with driver version 471.11 we will be able to get the full power of DirectX 12 without the random epilepsy inducing disco show. And finally in my life on Monday the 21st I had two super rare drops happen on the same day. After many attempts I finally managed to get the swift white Hawkstrider mount from Kael'thas in the Magister's Terrace dungeon and Thoridal, the Star's Fury legendary bow from Kil'jaeden in the Sunwell Plateau raid. When I got the Hawkstrider I wasn't actually paying attention and only after I had looted Kael'thas ran all the way back to the entrance and exited the dungeon and was cleaning out my bags did I realize that I had actually received the mount. Later on I was farming the Sunwell Plateau for some leatherworking recipes that dropped from the mobs in the beginning of the raid when I decided that I was going to call it a night and just finish the raid and take a swing at the bow. And I was there so why not? You know, let's take a swing at it. Needless to say it took me by surprise when the bow actually dropped. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next episode of This Week in WoW. So if you have not already done so, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the video. Cheers guys.